Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Friday, July 9th. Uh, taking a quick look at futures. Oil up 1.1%, copper up 1.5%, nat gas is flat. Uh, gold and silver up just a little bit, not a lot going on there. Uh, large caps, ES up about 0.25%. Uh, NASDAQ has actually turned red, but just by a few ticks. And uh, the big winner, at least in the pre-market, is small caps up about 1.1%. Over on the macro front, not a lot going on today. Uh, we got the G20 kickoff meeting. I guess that goes today and tomorrow over in uh, Europe. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, both oil and nat gas inventories. I thought it was interesting that oil uh, saw a 10 million barrel drawdown in inventory uh, across the product lines, gasoline, uh, oil, distillates, etc. Uh, and also U.S. production ticked up 200,000 barrels, which I thought was interesting. And we saw, I'm going to show you the chart in a minute, but we saw an uptick in in oil, you'll recall that we've had that turbulence coming out of the OPEC failure to come up with a production agreement, and we saw a downdraft, and then we saw uh, over the last uh, day and a half a recovery in oil prices. So uh, let's see how we wrap up this week. Uh, it's been kind of a turbulent week, and I think, uh, well, a couple things. If you were a person yesterday morning when you saw futures down, you know, one and a half percent, if you were absolutely terrified to see that, you got too much risk on. That's always kind of my benchmark thing. How do you feel? And, and if you go to that place where you're absolutely terrified, you know, you got everything long, you know, balls to the wall. And then you get that first red, you know, day or overnight move and you're absolutely mortified. You got too much risk on. Now, it turns out yesterday you got bailed out because they bought the dip. But if it goes the other way where it starts out down one and a half percent and then ends up down three percent. That's a whole nother ball game, and you you really don't ever know how that's going to go. So take that as a cue. If that was you, back off on your risk, and so you can sleep at night. Because I mean, we're at the highs. We're we're in the summer, low liquidity. They can push this thing around however they want to do it, and uh, you don't want to get you don't want to get trapped. Uh, in an overnight move like that that just uh, keeps on going. So uh, anyhow, if you're an active trader, I think you're probably in one or two camps. Yesterday afternoon, you were, you were saying, you know what, I nailed it. Honey, let's go out to dinner, grab the kids. You don't have to cook tonight. We're going out and we're going to have a good time. Or you're a little bit frustrated because there were a ton of opportunities yesterday. We had all the levels identified. And from that point on, it's all a matter of execution. So, and it's always very clear in hindsight what should have been done. And I think if you were in the camp of, you know, really uh, knowing you could have done a lot better, recap that day. That's what I like to do at the end of every day, kind of, you know, what was I thinking? What was I feeling? Did I freeze? Did I nail it? What was going on? You know, all that kind of stuff. And that's how you build into a trader that has better execution skills. Because, you know, as I talk about in these videos, I feel real confident about the levels and I'm going to show them to you here in a minute. But I can't hit the buy button and I can't hit the sell button for you. That's something you got to do yourself. But if you trust the levels, you got half you got half the deal licked. So let's get into it. 
10-year yields, we've had a dramatic flush in yields. We were at 1.5% just about 10 days ago, and we've pulled out uh, uh, 20 basis points. We're down here at 1.3%, actually a little bit below. We went down, uh, back tested it, and now we're at 1.28% on the 10-year. Uh, I think we're, we've bounced a little bit from there overnight. Notice that we're getting down here a little bit oversold. So I think that 10 year rate is going to continue to uh, drive the discussion on the reflation trade, etc. So even if you don't trade it, keep it on your radar. Here's the inverse of that lower bond yields mean higher bond prices. We had the big breakout. Uh, broke out of the downtrend line uh, moving up here. I'm still long TLT. We'll have to just see. Uh, uh, Pre-market, like I said, was down a little bit. But I think that's a good ballast on my, uh, on my particular uh, setup that, you know, having a, you know, small bond position was really nice yesterday morning. Uh, on the open when you know all my long positions were getting hit it was nice to have that bond position boldly green on that move you know over the last couple days it's been a nice little trade so but i think there's more to go we are at a resistance level here at 150 uh see if it stabilizes here or if bond yields drive lower and prices drive higher I don't think it's getting over 155. If it does, I mean, we got major issues because that's a huge, that's a huge resistance level there at 155. Uh, U.S. dollar, I've dropped in a modified trend line here, off of the peaks. We're at resistance here at uh, 92.8 on the dollar, so we've got support below. We've got resistance above. I think that's what you look for here. And just as a cheat sheet, we've got these scenarios here where we've been operating in scenario one, stable to falling yields and stable to rising dollar. And as we've seen, that's been a catalyst for the fat man names, you know, the bubble stocks, the DocuSign, Zoom, uh, EV Space, NEO, Solar, that kind of thing has been uh, generally supportive of these type names where we've seen scenario two, you know, if this is bullish, that means this is bearish and, you know, commodity cyclicals, reopening industrials, they've all been getting whacked. So that's the regime that we're in. And remember, if you see interest rates start to, you know, rebound or bounce, don't be surprised if you see a snap rotation back into these names. And you'll see that in IWM. Uh, here's the bounce I was talking about on uh, oil. This is USO, the ETF that tracks oil futures. We've got a nice line here at 49.25. We bounced up above, took out this downtrend line. Now I think, uh, well, we're up 1% here in the pre-market. So I think this 49.25 is now a good level uh, to shoot against on the long side if you're trading it. And if you're not trading it, you can set an alarm there just as a heads up that, you know, oil's falling again. And remember the correlation between uh, rising oil and rising uh, spy is uh, quite strong. So if oil's going up, that's going to be supportive of rising equity prices in SPY. So let's take a look at SPY. We had the gap down. We came down twice and hit the midpoint of the channel. And, you know, as a technician, I mean, this is what it's all about. It's about drawing lines in the right places and having the right idea about what happens. You're not right 100% of the time. Uh, but when you are right, it is very satisfying. 
we talked about you know dropping down after you've broken out dropping down your first target within a channel is the midpoint of the channel came down tagged it twice came back up entered the gap and now we're half well let's just say a third of the way uh, inside the gap with uh, this amount to fill now what to watch for today do they close it strong and drive higher or do they roll it over lose the bottom of this gap here at 429.50 come back down to the midline and lose that that would be that would be bearish and then you're once the midpoint of the channel is lost you know closes below not tags closes below then your target becomes the bottom of the channel and that would target a uh, fill of this gap down to here this 423 that we talked about yesterday so here it is on the 30 minute chart and here's where you got to pay attention if you're an active trader we gap down this was the gap from before this was the gap from yesterday's open so we had this line at 428 we had the gap we gap down momentum filled the gap and held the line at 428 and if you're sitting there watching the screen you had two hours to buy 428 right came down bounced up came down again 428 held came down again 428 held came down again 428 held so you had two hours to identify that the low has held and you had a chance to buy that and set a stop below and if you didn't just simply ask yourself why did I not see it uh, was I scared um, you know identify that reason and, and then put it in now if you did great you caught the low moving the tape forward what was your second chance to buy your ch second chance to buy was entering in the gap and that that is the strategy of some traders i'm not going to try and pick the low i'm going to wait for the gap entry and that's perfectly fine and here it was at 429.50 you mark the opening gap and then you wait for price to prove it you know all this here in your mind might be noise but once you enter the gap that's your next buy point so if you entered here you could have added to your position on the gap entry or if you missed the bottom you could have added here and then we go up and then now eventually back uh you know at the afternoon of the day or yesterday afternoon it got soggy and it came back to the bottom of the gap but you wouldn't have been stopped out i don't think because uh, the bottom of the gap held and then we had a nice closing candle so today i think you can use 431 and stay long against it what you certainly don't want to see is uh, price move down below uh, 429.50 at the bottom of the gap otherwise you're going to come back to 428 and back test that and if we were to break the low then that's bearish and then you'll come down to 426 and you know that'll bring these gaps into play and we saw that on the two hour cues uh, same kind of i same kind of idea we gapped down this was a gap from before that we had identified we filled the gap the bottom of the gap held had uh, uh, multiple chances to buy then came up came inside the gap and then drove higher I think today this uh, let's see what we've got here this 359 area I think would be a nice pivot uh, you can see the gap down 
again here, not quite as clean, but uh, certainly you had uh, two hours, a good, a solid couple hours here. You had uh, the gap fill and then it never, never went below after that and then stabilized here for several hours and then moved higher. And just like before on SPY, you recaptured the gap at 357 and then moved higher up to 359, then got a little wobbly in the afternoon, back tested the gap, and then bounced up higher. So I think uh, 359 and higher, you can uh, be long and see if we can get a gap fill up to 361 and close out the week like that. Or do they roll it over and come down and test this prior low? So uh, I think the trade of the day was IWM. Uh, let's look at why. Big move. Opened it. Well, it didn't open. But we closed Wednesday at, let's call it, 224. And we went all the way down to 218. $6 move. And... <clears throat> we had this gap from before. We had 218 marked on the chart from before. Well identified line. Here was your opening gap. This one you had to be a little bit quicker. But let's look at it. We took, we took the plunge. We tagged 218. Which was our support line. And then we bounced. So, okay. You weren't quick. You missed it. Your second chance was a recapture of 219 and this gap. And then you got a monster move over the next couple of hours to fill the gap. So if you got it at 218, you got a $6 move. And there was no, I was watching it, there was no scary moments of shakeout candles and stuff like that. Uh, straight up, filled the gap. That was your chance to get out. You know, technical move accomplished. Close it out. Congratulate yourself. If you wanted to get cute and reverse short, that would have been a great, great trade as well. Back down uh, today, I think you key off of uh, 222 as your pivot. Um, uh, here it is on a 30-minute chart. Uh, basically the same information, just zoomed in. You had only one chance to, to grab it at uh, 218 and then come up here and then grab the, the uh, gap entry for a 4 or $5 move, depending on when you caught it. And then you can see you got right up here where it filled the gap and reversed. And then that was a 50% halfback. If you put your fibs on this, this uh, level here was a 50% halfback. That's a good place to uh, make that trade as well. You know, back and forth, uh, uh, resistance, support, go. So 222 is your line. Let's get into the fat man trades. Uh, Facebook, $8 trading range, gap down. We had 344 as a support level which was halfway down from this measured move of $8, right down to 344, that held. You got a $4 bounce into 348. What was once support becomes resistance. So we bounce right into resistance and it was rejected. So today, I think 344 is your pivot. If you lose 344, it's coming to 340. If you can hold it and then recapture 348 that would be a nice buy if you got a if you got a buy at 344 that held and then or if we go up and take out 348 at any point that's a technical buy why we recaptured a well defined resistance layer from below and whenever you uh, capture that level from below it's a buy and then your target will be back up at uh, 356 uh, Apple, uh, nice technical action as well. We gapped down, came to the midpoint, tagged it, uh, spent a little time towards the bottom and had a nice run from 
let's call it uh, 140, 150 up to 144. Kind of a, you know, it got soggy in the afternoon. So today I think it's all about recapturing that 144. Uh, I looked pre-market was down, you know, a quarter, something like that. Let's see if we can uh, finish the week strong or if this thing rolls over back towards the midpoint. I'm, I'm still long, so I'm hoping that, uh, that the week can finish strong, break above 144, and then, you know, we can reset with a stop below 144 and see if we can plow on to new highs. So that was, you know, decent action. Uh, Tesla had some nice action as well. Nice technical action, that is. Why? We have the big $65 consolidation base. We had an open gap that hadn't been filled. We gapped down, filled the gap, held support, and bounced from, let's call it 625 up to 555 so that's a $30 move so you know if you're if you're a big tesla guy i mean you got to be happy with that you came right into well defined support i mean we talked about if 625 goes forget it you know back in this zone but it didn't it filled the gap held the line Get long on that recapture of 625, set your stop below, and you're quite pleased at the end of the day. Notice up here, you got the bull cross in PPO. Notice up here, you got oversold and it bounced. So, I mean, that looks good. So now, I think you can use uh, 655 as your pivot this morning. And you don't want to see price come back and lose 640. Um that is still support and then the last line in the sand remains 625. Uh, if we lose that on a daily closing basis that would be bearish as we've been discussing. Uh, Microsoft uh, again nice technical action. I, I can't complain everything is doing what it's supposed to do. Let's take a look at it. We're here uh, on the top side of this 60 minute channel we gapped down and went below we tagged the bottom of the channel we tagged this well-defined line at 275.50 it held the line and then bounced up back to this uh, 277 level uh, and that's what I think you can use uh, as your uh, active pivot here this morning see if it can drive back up towards the midpoint of the channel and certainly hold the bottom of the channel. Now, if we drop out and start closing below 275, then that's going to open up a move down to, you know, 272 to fill this gap. And you'll notice we've got uh, some open voids here below 275, and I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to see 275 go because there's a lot of running room here actually could bring it back into 270 something like that and I want to show you let's look at the daily uh, we're at the top of the channel here on the daily so unless there's some power move the the default technical action is you'd expect a reaction here and I think uh, for the bulls, what they want to see is either a consolidation here and just kind of walk up the channel or a breakout because, I mean, we're walking up the eight day, but we're at resistance. You can see in these other instances, we've come all the way back down to the bottom of the channel both times. So if that happens here, you know, you're coming back to 259. And I don't think you want to be sitting there long and watch a $20 technical pullback. So anyways, be aware of that if you're uh, heavy into Microsoft. And I mean, Amazon, uh, yeah, I'm speechless. What is there to say? Um, uh, we gapped down, 
had this 38% FIB level on the chart. We talked about it yesterday. That would have been, I mean, you had to be sharp. You had to be watching it. You had to be aware. You had to be bold. But it was there to be had. And this this low 36.21, even if you didn't get that, and you saw here this stabilizing area where, uh, let's just call it 36.40. It's hard to see exactly where that was. But you had three candles, um, three hours where uh, price did not break that low. And that would have been a great place to say, you know what? I'm going to get long with a stop just below. I realize that, you know, it could go the other way, but that's what stops are for. And then, and then you just got three massive, massive bars, uh, towards the close that were just incredible to watch, uh, in real time. And if you got that, like I said, you're somewhere between uh, happy and rich, depending on how much leverage you put on that. But just incredible strength. I mean, you know, to see that down move, see it bounce like right off the bat and then explode to be uh, up 35 bucks or 1% on a day like yesterday is uh, just unbelievable. Uh, Netflix, not a lot going on. It was down 1%. I think this uh, 532.50 is your clear pivot. We're inside this $35 gap. I still expect it to fill. There's no reason to think it's not going to fill. Uh, the thing you don't want to see as a bull is if we come back to 525 at this gap and then fill it and then come all the way back to 515. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to see that. You want to see 532 hold and you want to see a good. A uh, good strong close to end the week. Let's see if we can uh, get that. Um, Google uh, gapped down, came back to this 50% fib level that we had on the chart, got a little bounce, got up here to 2,500. I think that's your pivot for today. Uh, this is the amount of the gap that needs to be filled between, now well, let's call it 2515. In 2530, you got about you got about fifteen dollars of a gap to fill there. Still a strong chart, uh, nothing wrong with it at all. We've broken out and we've held this 2500, which I think is important. Uh, I don't want to see price lose uh, yesterday's low. Otherwise, you're going to come back and work on this gap and possibly come all the way back to 2450 and back test that, but. Uh, let's see uh, if we can close strong there. Uh, I just want to run through these other charts pretty quickly. You're running long on time. Semis were disappointing yesterday. Why? Uh, well, a bunch of reasons. They really didn't bounce as much as other ones. We were sitting here on top of this $10 consolidation. Uh, came down. Filled this gap. Fill the second gap. I will take those out today and clean up the chart. Uh, here's the remaining gap above from about 254 to 256. I want to see that. See if we can get price back above 258 or 256. Why is that important? Because we've had this big $35 consolidation range. We had a little breakout. Now as soon as we broke out, now we're back at the 50 already, and we tagged that yesterday. And as we've discussed, once you break out of a range, you don't want to go back into the range. So, <clears throat> uh, I'd like to be bullish semis, but from a technical standpoint, you can't, I don't think you can be all in right here. You got to be pretty cautious because we've had a significant violation of coming back into this range. And until price can recapture 256, 
257 right in that I mean you can we, you know play games with this line but until we recapture that breakout level I'd be uh, I'd be cautious AMD a little frustrating as well we had a dip you know if you we had this on the chart it's a one hour chart we had it you know 87 as a line uh, we got that bounce but then it, there wasn't much follow through so AMD has some work to do I think you can be long against 89.50, but uh, be careful with it. Um, you know, stay on top of it in that semiconductor group. If the group is weak, then chances are AMD will be weak. Uh, nice bounce, nice bounce back on our coal play. We had this big 20% move on Wednesday. We were down 10% on the open on this chart came roaring all the way back to close above 950 which was this important level and almost got back to this uh, uh, closing high yesterday or the day before of 10 so that was a strong strong bounce in coal car if you had taken the signal here on Wednesday you got a nice six percent move on car uh, if you got short your love and life right now, I'd stay short uh, against the 75 level. You could certainly roll down if you wanted to to 70 and then look for 65. But either way, you try to uh, uh, slice it. Uh, the chart is bearish. PPO's gone bearish. RSI's bearish. Price is below all the fast moving averages. Price is below lateral support. Next support is 65. So I think that's your technical target. Uh, CrowdStrike. Uh, all things being said, no problem. Just came back down into the 8-day. If you're in CrowdStrike, stay long. Uh, make sure you had uh, rolled up your strikes to uh, book this nice gain here. Costco had a nice day. Uh, up 6 tenths of a percent. We got long down here. Uh, sent out a note the other day to roll up to 405 and uh, buy some more time. I think it's going higher. Uh, nice to have a defensive name on a day like yesterday where it wasn't even red for five minutes and then uh, went green. Uh, Carvana had a nice day. We had this uh, breakout here. Uh, they pulled it back. We talked about getting long against this big trading range. If you did that down around 300, you had, uh, well, you had four days to do that if you're interested in doing that. And now it held all those days with your stop at 295 or so, $5 a risk. And now uh, we've broken back out and taken out this prior high at, at uh, three, what is it? 322 so that looks good now you if you got long here you can move up your stop to just below uh, 315 and just ride hopefully ride this eight day all the way up um, going forward and uh, KRE this is the regional banking index uh, I got short here on Wednesday so got a little move yesterday. This is all going to be with rates. So if rates go back up, you'll see strength in KRE. If rates continue to slide or get wobbly, uh, probably come down here to the 200 at, uh, you know, 59-ish, something like that. So a lot of information. Let's see how we wrap up the week. If you're new here, uh, I appreciate your time. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the alarm bell. Jump over to the show notes, click on the links to the blog site, register for all my content. You'll get everything delivered right to your email box. No hunting around social media. Uh, you'll get a nice uh, notification each and every time I publish content. Uh, if I have observations, trade ideas, etc., you'll be uh, getting that very easily in your inbox. For longtime subscribers, do something nice to finish the week. 
by passing my link along to your community, your Facebook groups, your trading groups, your Discord groups, your friends and family who is ever involved in the market. Uh, I'd like to think the content will be helpful to uh, both active and swing traders. And uh, if you pass that along, you'll feel better. I'll feel better. We'll grow the community. And uh, that'll be great. So thank you very much. All right, let's wrap up the week. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.